Good morning, St Mags. I'm hoping that I've got good enough connection. Might need to open the door in a moment. Hi, Mike. Hi, Al. So Sam is having to be in his office on a Zoom call, which is next to this. So I've had to shut my door. Um, and which means that I've got... Hang on a sec. I'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Stay there. Sorry, we're just sorting out some technical issues. I'm live at the moment. I need the door open because it won't pick it up otherwise. Sorry, love. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Sam's on a Zoom call with um, all the clergy in the area. So I'm I'm using this, but I'm going to talk quite quietly. Um, he's muted on his Zoom call, but sometimes he obviously has to take part. <laughs> oh, it's all go in the rectory this morning. The kids are playing. Ellie's still eating her breakfast. Speak up. I'm on, I'm on He's on mute, so I can speak up, although I don't really need to. Hello! <laughs> it is real life. Ellie's still having her wheat fix. I was just making Lego. We've got to do um, all our, all our uh, homework in a minute, all our homeschooling. But I just want to say hello, hello, hello to all those people that have been on already. Let's go back. I, I like saying hello to everyone. Mike, Al, Adrian, Edwina. Virginia, Lisa, Ross, Roz, Rosie, um, Wendy, Avril, hi, Ali, Christine, Auntie Christine, hello, Sue, <laughs> Anne, Carrick, Annie, um, Sandra again, and just checking, Charlotte, hello my lovely, um, Anne and Keith, Alison, Ali, how you doing, Hilary, Rach, Love it. Okay. Dawn, good morning, my lovely. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday already. <laughs> Where's that time going? I don't know. I don't know. There's... Uh, I, I don't know. I am lost for words. If you hear noise in the background, it's just going to have to be that way today. I hope you don't mind. Um, the kids are being fantastic. Ellie is make, working her way through her wardrobe every day. Um, today she is a glittery butterfly princess with a, a, a sequin dress on. And, and I can see her in the lounge over there and all the light is reflecting on her sequins and they're moving around the room. They're lovely, they're lovely. So hi Melissa, hi Penny, hi Jane. Well, it is good to be alive and it's good to be here. Hi, Diana. Right, so, and Catherine. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> you missed my cakes, Ali. Ali, I am so going to bake when Living Room comes back on. I'm going to be doing the biggest cakes I've ever done. Okay. Hey, Jill. <laughs> so, if you'd like to get your cup of tea or your cup of coffee. Hi, Jane. Let's have our simultaneous sip of togetherness this morning. Um, it's a weird old time. It, it, it's stretching on and I realised this morning I've become, I've been thinking a lot about you guys, but I've become quite insular to what's going on in the whole world. So we're going to be thinking about that later as well. Um, and I think it's really important that we do that. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. But good morning, chin chin. Sip, sip. That's so lovely. Oh, and Elaine Bennett, one of my bestest friends. Hello, Elaine. <laughs> Beautiful Elaine. Hi, Catherine. So, I'm going to start. And this morning, we are using our Lectio 365 again. Um, it's really powerful this morning. Uh, it's about confession and reconciliation and I think that's a really challenging subject for a lot of people 
um, but it's really vital to our faith, it's vital to how we live our lives, that we seek reconciliation and that we confess. Um, I think a lot of people get really upset if someone makes them feel guilty about something, but we don't need other people or God to make us feel guilty because we know if we're close to Jesus we know if something we're doing or thinking or saying is right or wrong if it's godly or not godly we don't need anyone to make us feel guilty if you're walking with Jesus and and you're close to him anything that isn't good and true and right will automatically smart with us and feel uncomfortable and it will push against our nature if we are walking close with Jesus. That's why it's so important to walk close with him and spend time with him and read the Bible and get to know who he is and know him intimately um, because it's not about God making us feel good. It's not about someone doing this. You are wrong. It's not about that big finger pointing at you. It's about our hearts. And it's about how we, how we in ourselves have that sense of right or wrong. And I've been talking to my kids about it. Um, in fact, they've been talking to me about it. I didn't bring it up about how they sometimes have thoughts they don't want to have and they know it's wrong. And we, we talked about forgiveness. Um, this is usually just before bedtime when we've got evening prayer in three minutes and they want to start a massive theological conversation <laughs> yes no tell me all about it <laughs> and just start sweating a little bit you're not going to get downstairs but it's it's a it's a real thing and it's innate it is inside us some people less so than others huh but you can i saw something today about how you can tell the size of someone's heart depending on how they treat animals or people who are struggling and it's so true isn't it okay so let's get to our lectio and have a time of stillness so it's the lectio for uh, Wednesday the 20th of May already we're continuing to explore themes from Pete Gregg's book how to pray today is about confession and reconciliation So today we're considering what it means to be reconciled in prayer. So as I enter prayer prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered senses upon the presence of God. As I draw near to you, God, would you draw near to me? Teach me to pray, Lord. May I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. And that's a prayer of Richard of Chichester. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. So, to rejoice and reflect. I choose to rejoice today in God's wonderful forgiveness, joining in the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. And that's Psalm 51, verses 10 to 12 and 15. Lord, help us to praise you, even in hard times, even in times where we are angry or just struggling. Lord, help us to unseal our lips and open our mouths to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'm reflecting on one of the most familiar texts in the Bible. It is the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, which we know as the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. In Matthew's Gospel, it forms part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is, in effect, the manifesto of the Kingdom of God. What we don't always remember is the vital footnote at the end of this great prayer. This, then, 
This is Jesus speaking. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And that's in Matthew 6 verses 9 to 15. Jesus makes it plain that it is not enough to ask God for forgiveness, but rather I too must forgive others. Confess your sins to each other. Send the Apostle James and pray for each other. (laughs) Sorry, let me start again. I got distracted by James. Oops, I didn't mean to send a laughing emoji. (laughs) You pray, Jane. You're you're brilliant at prayers. Let me start again. Jane makes it, Jane, Jesus makes it plain that it is not enough to ask God for forgiveness, but rather, I too must forgive others. Confess your sins to each other, said the Apostle James, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. In How to Pray, Pete Gregg writes, our choices to forgive can change the world. Breaking cycles of bitterness, healing divisions, and multiplying grace. He adds, when we forgive those who hurt us, the Father's name is hallowed, made holy. His his kingdom comes. Sorry about the connection, guys. Hopefully you've got it back. Facebook's struggling this morning. Let's get through and then we know we've done it together. So we're going to ask, Father, forgive me for all I have done that has hurt or displeased you. I ask too that you would bring to mind anyone who, whom I have hurt or treated unkindly. Show me what I must do to begin to heal the hurts which I have caused. Lord, I pray you speak to every individual watching this. And you help them to you bring people to mind, Lord. I'm back. Hope you're with me. It's easy for families to become locked in revolutions of resentment where grudges are held tightly and hurts are endlessly rehearsed. Father, I bring families who are trapped in this way to you now, perhaps even families I know, and I ask you to multiply grace upon them. Forgive them, Lord, and enable them to forgive one another. Lord, we lift these families up to you generations of unforgiveness and hurt and pain. Father, let the person hearing this now or the families that we're praying for be strong enough to break this. We are praying for families. We are praying for grace poured out on those families where there are grudges held tightly and hurts endlessly rehearsed. Lord, break the chain. Help people to forgive. Flood those families with love. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I return to the passage, I open my eyes, open my ears to your word and my heart to yield to your will once again. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. 
Matthew 6 verses 9 to 15. The Apostle Paul wrote that because God had first reconciled us to himself through Christ. I'm going to read that again. The Apostle Paul wrote that because God had first reconciled us to himself through Christ, that's in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18, we too have been given the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, if I am a Christian, reconciliation is my job, it's my ministry. That's hard sometimes. Pete Gregg notes that we simply cannot separate our prayers for the coming of God's kingdom from Christ's radical call to be reconciled with those who sin against us. Reconciliation is what the coming of his kingdom looks like. Reconciliation is what the coming of his kingdom looks like. Lord, we pray into this right now. We pray for reconciliation in our own families, where there is any. We pray for our friends, our extended families. We pray for people we know who are caught in a cycle of hurt and attack. Lord, I pray reconciliation. I pray that for nations, for estates where people live. I pray for peace, Lord. And when we pray for peace, we are praying for reconciliation. In Jesus' name, amen. And now a prayer of yielding. Lord, I surrender my right to hold on to hurt, bitterness or unforgiveness. I choose today to forgive those who have become the enemies of my heart. I surrender to you all my pain, trusting in your mercy that you make all things new. Today I stand on God's promise in James 5 verse 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So our closing prayer today. Oh Father God, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. If this has struck a chord with you, then, you know, if you've got the book, it, um, we've been looking at today at page 166 of Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray, and 168. But, um, you know, you can go on to the website and get further information, um, further sheets to look at and videos to watch. Um, there's loads of resources on the 247prayer.com website. Lecture 365 resources, there's just, it, it's all free and they've put so much work into it. It's amazing. There's the prayer course that you can look up online. And there's the prayer course ch tool sheds and that's just got all these suggestions and hints. Don't let it go by without being something that you seek. Because if you seek and you knock and you want to get closer to God through prayer, it will happen. You just need to do it, just like so many other things in life. So um, this morning I was really moved, guys, because um, I was reading on the news that there is um, a super cyclonic system heading towards India and Bangladesh. Um, and I realised how insular I've become. We've been... Um, I was watching some prayers from Elevation, to Elevation Church in um, it's Stacey. What's your church called in Exeter? Um, and the chap, the pastor there was praying um, for uh, East Africa where there's a horrendous famine in the moment. And I thought, oh my goodness, I haven't been praying. I haven't been praying for the, all these people that are massively on the line at, between death and life. And, um, and it, it, it really struck a chord for me and and then this morning I saw this thing about there's two million. my connection went I think it's coming back hopefully you're back with me 
I'm going to pray for the comments in a moment. But there's two million people in a lockdown India and Bangladesh region who are being evacuated. Two million people. So this cyclone Sidir, I think it's called, S-I-D-I-R, is moving towards the Bay of Bengal. They're expecting a water surge of between 10 and 16 feet. And that's what um, actually ended the lives of thousands of people last time there was this uh, a super cyclonic system heading towards that area in 1999 and 9,000 people lost their lives. Um, there's so many li migrant workers leaving cities and trying to get back to their villages that social distancing is, it's not even being attempted. It can't be attempted. It can't because people can't get back. They've cancelled all these trains. So can we just pray for them? Would you join me and pray for them? Lord Jesus, it's hard to know how to pray. Father, I want to be bold in our prayers. I pray that you help those countries, Bangladesh, India, to move those people safely. Lord, I am praying that something happens supernaturally to squash the power of this storm. Downgrade it, Lord. Stop it so that lives are not lost. I pray that you are close to the leaders in that country, the people who are heading up the evacuation. Father, we, it's, it, it puts everything that we are struggling with here into perspective. And I pray, Lord, that you will just intercede supernaturally. Send your miracles, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. So um, I'm just going to prompt you today, a different, if you're feeling down already, maybe it's not a good thing to go searching on um, the news channels. I'm just wondering if actually giving away and praying to others, for others, globally, puts things in perspective for us and um, actually brings us closer to Christ anyway, because prayer is prayer and we're praying. Um, I just want to encourage you to do that. I'm not being sombre, I'm being serious. And there's a, that's a different face, sombre and serious. So um, God bless you guys. I'm just going to look through these. So it's Ed's birthday today. So it's celebrating with super excited children. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Ed, happy birthday to you, have a wonderful day Ed, fantastic, oh, we love you Ed, okay, so, um, praying, so Christine, Chris, we're praying for your friend whose family don't talk anymore, Lord, I'm lifting up this family to you, let there be breakthrough, Lord, and reconciliation by the power of your holy name. Lord God, send your Holy Spirit. Lord, help Christine to pray for that family. May we be persistent in prayer. May we pray with petition and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Dig the word for Ladies' Day. Our lovely Bob had a word for the ladies who ran the Ladies' Day to dig, dig for oil. And... Um, it's been really helpful, so thank you, Bob. Thank you so much for that. Um, praying for everyone who is hurting today. God's peace be with you all, absolutely. Amen. Um, and I'm just going back. So Kelsey, Kelsey Aston has an exam today. Lord God, I'm lifting, lifting up Kelsey to you. Father, give her confidence. Help her recall her, her memory if she needs that for her exam. Help her to her fingers to work quickly, to do writing or whatever it is she has to do. I am praying that she does it to the absolute best of her ability, without stress, without strain. But it flows naturally and she comes out of it feeling lighter. But let her know your presence with her during that exam. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I think that's all of them. So guys, remember, let us know if you need us. Um, if you need food still, you know, people still can't go out. Um, let us know if you need us. Uh, remember, you, you can email Sam. And um, yeah, so Viv's internet very slow. Only got you in short bursts. That might be helpful, having me in short bursts. 
don't know. But um, my internet's been like it too. I think it's just struggling. I think it's just struggling. So um, we love you guys. Have a blessed day and um, enjoy the sunshine. Uh, I hope you get some exercise and um, I hope you get to call the person you need to call. Have FaceTime with the people you need to have FaceTime with. I hope you feel you can get out of bed and do your day. And I'm praying, let's just pray now, Lord God, for all those people who are struggling with isolation. For all those people where being isolated in lockdown has triggered something in them that they weren't expecting. And it's kind of come out of left field and they're surprised by it. Lord, I'm praying for them for a revelation of your grace and your love. I'm praying for a renewed spirit, renewed energy. I am praying most of all for healing, for illness, both physical and mental health issues. Lord, I am praying that you are especially close. And as we come to Pentecost, that your Holy Spirit will begin to move in ways that we have not witnessed before. I pray that you will weave your way through and around and in amongst families and people and you will lift them. Lord God, send your healing by the power of your Holy Spirit and in your beautiful Son's holy name, our Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to let you go because I've gone on a bit, as I usually do. <laughs> we love you guys. I'll see you Saturday night. And um, I think Sam's back tomorrow. I'm not quite sure who's on this evening. It might be Sam. Um, I just, I've lost track of all days and all times and things like that gonna go and do school and piano lessons yeah take care bless you bye